Right, welcome back, everyone. Um, this is going to be the solution to um, my previous question on my community board. Um, I previously asked you guys to find a way to make a projectile. Um, and projectiles have been, I've been asked a few times to make projectiles, and I thought I'd ask you guys um, to do it on your own first, and then I'll do it. So this is my tutorial on it. Um, I'm going to go through the concept of it first, and then we'll kind of build our way up to a real projectile. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have a main here. Um, this will be my scraps project. So any tutorial I do will be in here. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we're gonna to have to make a separate um, node. And the reason why is because, now I'll show you in a second. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually make a sprite first. And this sprite, no, I lied. We'll do a label, um, not a label, a panel. So that way it kind of looks a bit more like a bullet. So this will be our bullet here. Make it into a rectangle. There we go. Okay, that's our bullet. Uh, I'll save it as bullet. I'll go here, save it as bullet, save, go into our main, and I'm going to add our player, right? Our player is going to be this Godot guy, little Godot thingy. Uh, we'll save, we'll go into our node 2D. We'll do built in for now, it's okay. Um, next up, we're going to, the reason now, so this is why we needed it to, we need the bullet as a separate node itself, because we want it to be something that we can load into the game without having it exist already, if that makes sense. So the way to do that, obviously, if you've used Godot before, is on ready, variable, um, bullet equals preload. So preload allows us to preload this scene, and we can now use this scene in the future. So we're not going to put anything in the process function. We're going to make a input. Input. There we go. Whoops. Input event. Um, and then we're going to check for event is action. We'll do is action for now. And then we'll just we'll just print something. And we'll just print A. So now whenever I play my game and I press space bar, if I hold it, it'll continue printing A. But that's what I want to do. I want to create uh, a bullet. So how do we do that? Well, uh, usually there's two steps to this. Um, we instant, we have, Godot 4 has changed this. Um, I don't know what it's called, let me check. So usually we instance it and then we will add the child. So those are the two steps. We create the child, the, the object, and then we add the child somewhere, right? Because once we make it, we basically hold it in our hand, right? And say, okay, where do we want to put it? We have to actually put it somewhere, right? Um, so those are the two steps to creating a bullet, essentially. So that's the concept of creating a projectile. Okay, um, let's do variable bullet one, just to have it a different name, and let's say bullet dot init. Init. I don't know. I can't read. I'm illiterate. Someone, let me know down below how you say that word. Instantiate. Instantiate. Yeah, instantiate. Right. I don't know. Um, so. We've instanced it, or we created that bullet from the preloaded bullet, right? So this is the preloaded bullet that we got. We create it, and we we give it a separate object, right? And then we say, oh, not bullet one. Um, we just add the child, so we can add child bullet one. That's the bullet that we want to add, right? And so what this does is going to add it in our Node two D. So now if I go play, go to remote, go to Node two D. Let's uh, bring up our game. Every time I click it creates it right here. If I hold it, it'll create a bunch of bullets, right? So you might've noticed that one, the bullet's not doing anything, and two, um, there's create being a lot created. So the way we can fix this is by going to, is action either just released or just pressed. Now, I have, someone asked me in the comments uh, from another video, how would I be able to load a, like a bow and arrow almost and then release it? Um, this is how, so you can check for the input of when, when we go, so press is, is, a, is if I press down and then release is if I let go, right? So if I wanted to make it so that, um, for a mouse, for example, cause mouse is a, is an action as well. So you can have UI accept, you can have UI mouse, whatever. Um, you would have to do that later on on your own, but the idea is the same. So I click down on my mouse to load my bow and arrow. And then once I release, then you can release the bullet or create the bullet. So it's up to you. Um, 
what I would do is if I, I would say if pressed, then you can animate like a bow if you want. And then once you release, that's when you release the bullet or create the bullet. So if that if you're wondering how you would do that, that's how you would kind of think about it. I'm not going to do that because I want you to do that on your own. I'm not going to show you how to do everything. I want you to take what I teach and kind of apply it to your own stuff. So let's actually make this bullet do something. So let's go into our bullet. Let's add a script. And in our process function, we're just going to, let's just create a speed variable and we'll say it's equal to 100. And then in our process function, we're just going to say position dot y plus equals speed times delta and that is it and this should allow us to move so now if i play it creates it and it goes by dot um we need to move the x not the y my bad so now when i create it it goes forward okay awesome we now have a bullet um maybe i wanted it a bit faster we can do 200 um now let's go back to our bullet and i want to add this child in my icon and there's two ways to do this i'm going to show you two ways to do this one is better than the other for a specific reason so usually or not usually but one option is just to get the icon and then add it to that child or add a child to that icon so the position automatically changes to that that node right so now every time i launch it creates a bullet there we go now another way to do this and i would recommend doing this instead is you can have a, a container for the bullets separate from the player itself. And then we take the player's position. So we say um, bullet one dot position equals get node dot position. And now this will do the exact same thing as if I added it into the actual player, right? It'll look the same, but it's not the same. So now it's adding the bullets still into the node 2D. It's not adding it into the uh, player itself. Um, all right, next thing you might want to be wondering is how do I aim this? Because one, my player doesn't move. Maybe maybe you want it to go straight and your player moves up and down and then you can create like a little shooter game like that. That's fine. Um, however, let's say I want to rotate my player. Well, that's actually pretty easy. What we can do is say, um, get node, let me just check. Yeah, actually copy paste of this. Get node dot rotation equals to um, look at, get global mouse it's not i'm just going to copy paste this because it's not uh correcting for me um also sorry uh it's not rotation we just say look at dot look at so we get our node and we say dot look at our get global mouse position so we're going to get our global mouse position and godot has a built-in look at function that it, it basically edits our rotation for for the node itself so we there is a way to do the math properly. Um, I'm not going to do that, but you can kind of figure it out. So you can subtract the mouse position to the player and then get the angle between that and then set that angle to that position. But this is just easier. It's one line. And now every time I move my mouse, my player looks at it. However, my bullet does not follow the mouse. It does not follow anything. It only follows the X position, right? So how can I change that? Well, the first thing, we can kind of do is take this and say rotation equals rotation. Uh, and this will now allow us to have the rotation of the bullet rotated in the same rotation as the node or as our player, right? So now if I'm looking down, it's going to give me a seizure because um, we're working with a panel. That's why, aha, there is no rotation in the panel. Okay, so this brings me to my, my next point. Um, we'll, we'll kind of test that in a second. But so the reason why we use the panel is because I want to show you guys that you can make a bullet or a projectile out of anything, really. It doesn't have to be an area 2D. It doesn't have to be a collision. However, you might be thinking, if you've used Godot already, why don't I just use area 2D? And that's right. Why don't I just use two, area 2D? Um, area 2D, if you don't know, is an area for detection um, and physics. And whatever, or whatever the description is there. But generally, we would use Area 2D as a bullet. Reason being, because let's go back to our main. If I have, let's actually do this. Let's. This is our enemy over here. We'll create Area 2D for this guy. We'll do. Um, we're gonna put the icon in there, and then we'll say 
we'll add a collision. And then we'll go rectangle and we'll make a rectangle for our little enemy here. Well, there we go. So this is our enemy. And we want to, uh, we'll say enemy. We want to basically shoot our enemy and detect if I hit it, right? But I can't do this with a panel. Um, I think you could possibly, but it would be very awkward and weird. And it's just better to do it with an area 2D. So what we'll do is go to, we'll add the area to you and see reparent. And I think we should just be able to do this. Nope. Um, make scene root. There we go. Um, and then we'll go into here and we're going to copy paste this. We're going to get rid of that script. I'm going to add it over here. I'm going to rename this first bullet and then add it to the area 2D and then copy paste this. And then in our area 2D, we also need to add a collision. There we go. Um, and then give it a shape. We'll give it a rectangle. That's fine. And there's our area 2D. And now we also have, this is the shape of it. You can have a sprite instead if you have an actual image of the bullet, but I'll just use a panel for now. And then in our, actually, I think we should now be able to test this. Ooh, never mind. The type float. Did I? Ooh, I did not spell it right. That's why. Okay, let's try one more time. Okay, there we go. So as you might be able to see, it kind of works, right? So if I'm facing upwards, it's going to make the panel also face upwards. However, the panel is still moving forward. Well, this is a problem. Why is it a problem? Because we are moving the X position here. Um, so the way to fix this is there's an easy um, fix is we can just say transform dot X times speed times delta. And this allows us to take our transformation um, in our bullet, right? Because remember, if you keep in mind in here, we've edited the transformation and the position the position doesn't matter, but the rotation matters in our transform. So if we go to transform, the position, rotation, all of this is in there. So it's going to take our transformation and the time, the dot X, and multiply that by speed and delta. So now, if I go play again, now it'll take that rotation and go at that angle that we shot it at. So now I can shoot out a bunch of different angles. Um, now let's, this is kind of a bonus. And I'll, I'll show you guys why we used area 2D. So now um, we can we can do area entered. Um, we'll connect it here, and we'll say print area dot name, and then we can print. And then if I shoot at the body over here, it'll once it hits, it'll print the name again. Um, to kind of give this more of an effect, we can say area dot. Uh, now we'll say, yeah, area dot two three. You ah, it's not good. Yeah, whatever. But you can do whatever you want with that. So you can get the area by calling area. So you can say, okay, I'll try to wait. Let's see if I it'll q three. There we go. Area dot q three. So now let's see if that works. So if I shoot at it, press space, should just delete that object. There we go. So you could do anything else with this. You can do like HP minus one, you can do area Q free, whatever. So this is how you create a projectile, essentially. Um, this is very simple projectile. Um, but the idea behind the, the bow and arrow uh, hold press is would have to be in the input. So I think the most complex part about complex part about the bullet or projectile would be in the input itself. Um, obviously there is stuff you can do in the bullet itself as well, which would be cool. Uh, I know there's like, um, some things that might separate a bullet that would, that would be cool. Um, you would create two childs of the same bullet, uh, away from each other or something like that. Um, but this, maybe that could be another video actually, that'd be kind of cool. Um, let me know if you want a continuation of, of the projectile series. I could actually, I'm actually thinking I, I might do something like that. It sounds kind of interesting. Um, but yeah idea behind this is the input. So if you want to do is action pressed and in, is action released, they are different. Test it. I recommend you test it because it's hard for me to show you on my keyboard, literally pressing down and pressing up. So you need to try this out on your own. You need to test out the is action pressed, is action released. Um, 
And I think that is it. I think the only difference between this and Godot 3 is um, in, in, blah, 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 instance, which is now instant initiate. I don't know. I can't read. Um, but everything else should be the same. Um, area 2Ds are all the same. And that is it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this episode, let me know in the comments below. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next. Um, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep trying to do my RTS series, um, but it's a bit slow. School is catching up with me a little bit. Um, again, join my Discord down below in the comments. Um, I, it is the it's also posted in my community uh, somewhere. You can check there. Um, if the link is null or it's not working, let me know and I'll update it uh, in the future. So if you're watching this like a year from now, hopefully I'm still continuing these videos. Uh, comment, and I'll probably still hopefully get to you. Um, I will do my best, at least. So I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.